Yesterday I was in the visual design chat of KD and one person came called Drago, Dra, Dra, Dragos sorry, and uh, posted this screenshot and said that he'd made actually this applet. And my first thought was like, uh, this got to be a mock-up, right? Like, look at this. It's too pretty to be real. Let's be honest. It's too pretty. But actually it was indeed real, but there's a catch which I thought was super interesting. So he made this through HTML and CSS, which is interesting because usually applets in KD Plasma are made through QML and that's how you do applets. All of the applets are done with QML as far as I know. So some someone coming in and saying, I've done a widget and by the way, it's HTML and it looks like this. I was like, okay, how? Like I can see where this is going because technically speaking, Nothing prevents you from actually embedding a uh, web page inside of your applet and then somehow communicating from the web page. I mean, somehow, I, I kind of know how to do that from the web page to actually save all the stuff and then update HTML code to show new things. So I kind of saw that, but at the same time, the amount of effort to actually embed the thing seemed very high. And so I tried talking with him and uh, it's been super nice. Actually has helped, him, has helped me with some projects that I'm doing. And so this is actually a widget that exists already, not the actual widget that you're seeing, but the concept of seeing the HTML page. It's called Web Slice and you can find it in the store.kd.org. You just open it up and then you search here, Web Slice. Sorry. And it's this one. And the nice thing is that not only does this show a static uh, HTML page, which can be local, so you can make it whatever you want, but you can also select inside of the settings as shown here to actually make this transparent. So it actually follows your system theme. And the result is this, there are catches. So let's take this as an interesting idea, because right now it's just an interesting idea and see if it's actually feasible, what are the upsides and what are the downsides. So first of all, could you do a full, um, full working applet out of this? And technically speaking, I don't see why not, because now the first thing you can uh, think about is actually how to display updated data, because if you want to do something like battery, well, the web page cannot access the battery because it's a web page and there's no API for JavaScript inside of a web page to access the battery. But you can actually generate uh, the, web, the web page and the viewer will actually um, update every three, four seconds, whatever you set it to be. It's here, reload interval. So if you want something that updates with time, that's feasible, which is nice. Other things, uh, well, if I press a button, if I write something, that something should probably be saved something, somewhere, sorry. As an example, quick notes, if you write some quick note, it should probably be stored. And the basic idea could be saving it to local storage, which is what he has done. And it actually works and even persists over reboots, which is pretty cool. However, I don't think it's the very safest option because it's local storage. It might be deleted. It's not actually a file. Ideally, you'd want to have everything in a file, but there's no reason why the web page couldn't communicate with a web server, as an example, to actually receive the data and store it somewhere. That said, I am the single uh, ignorant person about this thing. I have never done a dynamic uh, like PHP stuff web page. So I have no clue whatsoever on how to actually do this. If you do know, then you can do this. And if it stores data, you can also, uh, I think that I saw like a lot of time ago, I actually wrote a script that generated a custom uh, HTML page. So it's actually possible. You just have to <laughs> do it. And technically speaking, I don't think there's anything really that blocks you from doing a full applet just using HTML and CSS now and JavaScript and the web server. Now, the issue is also actually delivering this 
to anyone. So it's not like you can take this and put it in the web store as this because uh, the widget here is the web slice. So what you would need to do is ship the web slice and then also the HTML page. And since uh, it's probably not going to be just an HTML page, but HTML plus uh, some other scripts, then it's going to be a bit difficult to set up and everything is going to be made manually. But if you have the time to actually set it up, then you could do it technically. This is not something that could be a widget that everybody uses, but for perfectionists, it might be interesting, especially because a lot of people know HTML and CSS, uh, whereas the people who actually know QML already are not as much. That said, I still think that QML is the best option to actually do these applets. First of all, because it's so much simpler. Like I understand, understand the appeal of doing something like this, but it's going to take actually downloading the widget, doing the web page, and then all of the type stuff behind the scenes to actually make the web page communicate with uh, some external script. If you do QML, uh, everything you can see it. Everything is done thinking about QML. You can even interact with the Plasmoid API. It's going to make your day simpler. The I should also notice that <laughs> I have used both QML and HTML a lot at this point and it, QML is actually pretty good. Like if you have done a lot of HTML since CSS, sorry, stuff, I think you will appreciate uh, QML a lot as well and you should check it out. It's actually very, very easy to learn. It doesn't require any incredible skill and if you know how to do a web page, you will be able to do an applet with no effort. So if you want to do an applet, then you should check out QML. But if you want to do something, maybe sketch, do a mock-up, like do an actually functioning mock-up of a applet, then why not? Like this could be something really simple because to do a static web page and then just write the name here is really simple, a really simple way to do a really simple widget for personal use without actually making it accessible for other people. So that was everything for this video. Hopefully it was interesting. And if you want to do an applet and you want to learn QML, then uh, I've actually done one video about uh, actually doing applets. It's just one, I wanted to do more. And maybe in the future I will have the time to, but for now, <laughs> that's all I have. There are also a lot of great, 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 Documentation, as an example, there's a handbook about QML. If you don't know the link, you can ping me, I'll find it and give it to you. It's uh, free for everyone, as far as I know. And uh, there's also some very nice third party, actually first party because it got merged, first party KDE theming guides. So on actually how to do applets. So you can check those out. If you want to do an applet and you need some help, you can always feel free to ping me. And if you like the video, you can also subscribe, but that's just up to you as always. See you tomorrow.